Pavlova doesn't have to be fussy or intimidating, and I'm going to prove it to you today. We're going to make a pavlova that breaks all the rules and will still impress all your dinner guests when we're allowed to have dinner guests again. The other great thing about this pavlova is that it's incredibly inexpensive to serve up some gourmet flavor any season of the year. Let's get to it. Pavlova is a whipped meringue dessert that gets its name from Russian ballerina Anna Pavlova. Is it just me, or does she look a bit like Putin in this picture? It was invented in Mrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
I did, so I can put this in. After you put the pav in, you'll want to immediately turn the heat down to 200 and let that cook around 90 minutes. After the time is up, turn the oven off and leave the door closed. You don't have to do this, but it keeps the pav from cracking, so if that's important to you. While it's cooking, or more accurately, drying, we'll get started on the topping. Pavlova is typically served around Christmas time in the Southern Hemisphere, i.e. when it's very hot and tart fruits are in season. Here in the Northern Hemisphere in January, and specifically rather far north indeed, there is no fruit. So our next great deviation will be to turn this improper pavlova into something decadent enough to get you through a snowstorm. First, we'll make our praline so it has time to cool. Praline seems super fancy, but it's so easy to make and way less expensive than buying it. You could also make this the day before. If you make it ahead, you have the luxury of toasting the almonds first, and thus adds an extra layer of flavor to your praline. Throw one cup each of white and brown sugar and half a cup of water in a pot. Bring it to a boil and simmer 10 or 15 minutes or until the thermometer reaches the hard candy stage. I'm brushing the sides with water to stop sugar crystals from forming on the sides. You can see as the liquid boils out, it gets thicker and the bubbles become more ominous. Add in a couple cups of almonds and a tablespoon of butter and Bob's your uncle. Put it on a sheet to cool, and if you're feeling uber, blend up some of it. I put that on everything. Next, we'll make some caramel sauce, another seemingly impossible food that is well within your reach. The hardest part of making caramel is patience, and caramel can go too far, so timing is everything. We're going to start with regular old sugar, and we're just going to heat it and stir and slowly but surely, like magic, the sugar will melt. This is why it was important to not anger the sugar gods earlier. You have to keep stirring or the sugar will form hard lumps that burn before they have a chance to melt. Before it's all melted, you want to be ready to immediately stir in your butter. This will stop your molten sugar from burning. But remember, this is molten sugar. Don't let it spatter on you. Sugar burns are way worse than regular burns because the sugar sticks on you and you can't wash it off. You don't need any of that. After the butter is fully incorporated, 
Cook for one minute with no stirring, maintaining a steady boil that doesn't get too out of hand. Then we add our cream, and same deal. Stir it in, boil for a minute with no stirring. Add a bit of salt, and that's it. You've just made a gourmet dish in its own right. It will thicken more as it cools, and it will keep in the fridge for some amount of time. I always use it up before it's a concern. Put some of that on store-bought ice cream and feel great about the decisions you've made. Lastly, we'll make our cookies and cream whipped cream. This is a super easy twist on a classic that will take your whipped cream to the next level. Whipped cream is so easy to make. Those aerosol cans are convenient, but try keeping a bowl of flavored whipped cream in your fridge and you may never go back. The planet would be pretty jazzed about it, BT dubs. So, we're gonna whip up our cream, I don't measure it, and slowly add some sugar to personal taste. Ah, see, I remember the vanilla this time, mostly. And now we... Now that it's looking good, let's fold in some cookie crumbs. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. I think we're ready to put it all together. Let's see how our pavlova turned out. It's looking good on the surface, but let's see what happens when we cut into it. Okay, we definitely have some breakage. You know what, that's okay. We're gonna be topping it, no one's gonna see that. On the inside, we can see that there was a definite hollow formed beneath the exterior. The texture on the inside ranges from more marshmallowy to more custardy. Absolutely, it's a deviation from the norm, but this texture will actually work great with our unconventional toppings. Now you can absolutely decorate your entire pavlova all at once, but I'm going to take this opportunity to set half aside so that after filming, I can eat it plain over the sink like a goblin. Either way is fine. We'll smear a little whipped cream on there. No, you take your knife and you smear. Top it with some extra cookie crumbs for visual reference. Then we'll do some praline. I like to pick out some of the compressed bits. They melt in your mouth like maple candies. We'll add a few intact pieces of praline, drizzle with some caramel, and Voila! I guarantee if you serve this to your guests, you will be hailed as dessert royalty. And with good reason, because the taste is incredible. Hey fellow humans, I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. I'd like to make more of these longer videos, so if you want to see more content like this, it really helps the almighty algorithm if you like and subscribe, and even leave a comment below. Let me know what dishes you'd like to see in the future. Until next time, make something that makes you happy.